Hello, this is Josh Patel, and today I am bringing you another biology lesson. Today we will be going over chapter 4, which is all about cells and energy, and we're going to do lesson 4, which is an overview of cellular respiration. So, our key concept for today is the overall process of cellular respiration converts sugars into ATP using oxygen. So, as we know, Animals and plants both do cellular respiration, and we use this to get energy from our food. So cellular respiration makes ATP by breaking down sugars, or our food. So cellular respiration is aerobic, or requires energy. So there's anaerobic and aerobic. Aerobic requires energy, and anaerobic does not. So aerobic stages take place in mitochondria. So this is our animal cell and this is our mitochondria. So glycosis must take first must take place first. So this is another process, but it comes before cellular respiration. So anaerobic so it's anaerobic process, it does not require oxygen. It takes place in the cytoplasm and it splits glucose into three into two three carbon molecules. So it splits glucose into two molecules that both contain three carbon molecules. So it produces two ATP. So this process converts and gets two ATP. So this is your glucose and it just splits it into two pieces basically. And it gives ATP. Yeah. Cellular respiration is like a mirror image of photosynthesis. So it's like the same thing but backwards. So in this cycle it has the Krebs cycle. So unlike photosynthesis, which had the Calvin cycle, this one has the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle transfers energy to an electron transport chain. So this takes place in the mitochondrial matrix. And so the matrix is an area enclosed by the inner membrane. So it's like in between the membranes. So it breaks down three carbon molecules from the glycolysis. So it takes the two pieces that got produced from glycolysis and it breaks them down. So it makes a small amount of ATP from this process and it releases carbon dioxide. So the waste product of the Krebs cycle is CO2 and it also produces ATP. So the ATP is transferred. So the transfers energy carrying molecules, which is ATP, into the electron transport chain, which is the second part of our process. So the electron transport chain produces a large amount of ATP. So it takes place in the inner membrane, energy transferred to electron transport chain. So the ATP is transferred here and then oxygen enters the process. That's why we need to breathe to do cellular respiration. We need oxygen for this certain process. So this produces ATP and water is released as the waste product. So our two glycolysis molecules enters the Krebs cycle and we release CO2 and we get energy and the energy is transported to the energy transport chain in where oxygen joins the cycle and the oxygen and the energy, the ATP, produce a large amount of ATP and it also produces water as a waste product. So the equation for the overall process is C6H12O6 plus 6O2, so glucose plus oxygen yields 6CO2 plus 6H2O, so water and CO2, carbon dioxide. So the reactants in photosynthesis are the same as the products of cellular respiration. So this is cellular respiration and then photosynthesis is the same equation just flipped. You switch the reactants and products. So we can look at that. This is photosynthesis. So it's CO2 plus H2O, carbon dioxide plus water yields glucose and oxygen. And then on cellular respiration it is sugar and oxygen, so sugar and oxygen, yields carbon dioxide and H2O, carbon dioxide H2O. So it's the same thing but backwards. So 
so that's the end of the video which was chapter 4 lesson 4 overview of cellular respiration and the next video will be on chapter 4 which is all about cells and energy lesson 5 which is cellular respiration in detail so make sure you watch the next video and if you missed anything make sure to go back and review and look over it again and good luck in your quest in biology